Bravo 5. Kilo Bravo 1, Hector Victor Juliet, KB1 HVJ, the name here is Glenn. Just wanted to mention I was able to copy you on Simplex a few minutes ago from here in Alexandria, Old Town. What we're listening to are people talking about their signal reports. And what that means is I get on my ham radio and I, I send messages out and see how far they can go under adverse weather conditions. In the event of an emergency, and I think snowmageddon, snowpocalypse, snow reaction, whatever they're calling this, um, snowstorm Jonah, it counts as an emergency, but it's so far not um, the fall of all infrastructure emergencies. So I'm on one of the local repeaters in Virginia, and what a repeater is, is it has, it's a, a good ham radio station, which means a strong one, and it has a very high antenna so that it can reach a far distance. So I actually listened to a conversation from someone in Springfield when I'm in Washington, D.C. on this repeater. So all this person in Springfield has to do is get their signal to the repeater. The repeater repeats it on its stronger machine and stronger antenna, and then people all over can hear it, including me here in Washington, D.C. Now, um, that's, that's pretty far away, frankly, um, to, from Sterling, Virginia to Washington, D.C. So that's what I'm, I want to demonstrate to you. And so we have little chatter, and we give each other advice on how to improve our signals. I uh, went to a straight radio-to-radio -radio contact with somebody who's in Crystal City. So I'm just going to turn this on so you get an idea of what it's like to actually work, um, work contacts with other people in your area, okay? Apparently, they're not saying anything right now. I'm uh, on 5-1 right now uh, with the Kenwood THF6HT using a diamond SRH771 antenna, I will uh, reduce it uh, to one watt. Yeah, go ahead and reduce it to, to one watt, give me a call. This is KB1HVJ on one watt, one watt. Okay, Glenn, uh, you're loud and clear, and the reason for that probably is uh, you are getting the remote receiver for this repeater, which is in Oxen Hill, Maryland, so you may actually be able to see the remote repeater on your site. Wonderful news. Um, I'm, I'm in a very RF-compromised environment. I am on the ninth floor. I'm uh, looking directly east towards the 495 bridge in the Potomac River, but I have about a 15 to 20 degree angle view, so all the other directions are occluded, so I must be pointing. One of the things about the ham radio hobby is that we, we do tests on, we're basically communications junkies. Um, we were into this stuff long before cell phones or anything like that. And it's, um, we find it very, very exciting. So what he was talking about is having different strengths of radio. So what you want to do is see how far you could get on one watt. Now, the beauty of a one watt radio is that it only takes a, a couple of batteries to power your radio, which is excellent in an emergency because... What if your electricity is out? It's not inconceivable. Your electricity will be out for some time, such as in Hurricane Sandy, there were parts of New York City that were out of electricity for over a month. So if there's an emergency and um, rescue crews can't get through, um, you want, there, there has to be a way of uh, communicating, hey, there's a problem at my corner. We need emergency service. And then someone who could hear that on the repeater can contact their, res their emergency rescuers 
and then they could directly contact the ones in DC. So that's just one example of how this works. And of course, we're we're just classic propeller heads, and I'm sure people would be offended if they heard me say that, but we're the classic propeller heads, you know? Um, it's a revenge of the nerds. So we just really like this stuff, and it's it's just so much fun. Now, I tell everybody that my, my ra I've got the only YouTube channel that does ham radio and knitting. So I'm going to show you my latest knitting project. I'm known, I have what's called an HT. I only have HTs. That means handheld. Uh, a handheld, uh, a handheld, uh, you know, ham radio. And this is called a mag mount. This is the antenna. I bought it specially because what it does is you put it on the top of your car. Oh, I didn't mean to chew my own cord there. You put it on the top of your car and then you drive around and you talk to people. Why not? Life is short. Talk to people. And I tend to be a bit of a gabagale. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you, but um, it's just fun connecting with people all over the place, finding out what uh, ham radio stuff that they're into, and local events. So each repeater, usually not always, usually will have um, a weekly net meeting, which means everybody in that club that supports that repeater will go in and listen to the repeater, and they have basically a meeting on the air. I guess you would liken it to um, video conferencing like without the video or a conference call or a multiple Skype meeting and so that's uh, so then they tell you everything that's going on and actually there are several weekly news shows about ham radio and they talk about ham radio events around the world. In New Zealand, they're doing this. In Morocco, they're doing this. So, if you like the hobby, buy gum. You're going to love it. So, that's what I wanted to share right now and um, share a little bit of my knitting as well. I finally had the courage to knit socks. And yes, I make the heel and the toe a different color because I'm not sophisticated enough in making socks to to remember where the heel ends and the toe ends and that doesn't matter for your first sock but if you want your second sock to look like your first sock you're going to need to really keep those pretty delineated and if it's all the same color and all the same yarn that's not so easy to do not for a person like me this is only my fourth pair of socks but I'm finishing it up and um, this looks great, doesn't it? Don't I look like a star? Oh, yes, I do. It, but, but the truth is, I just do a straight knit. And all this pattern you see, that's not different yarn. That's just one yarn that's been dyed. To, so when you knit a sock, it looks like you're a superstar. Okay? But as far as I'm concerned, people came up to me in the Starbucks the other day and thanked me. Or not thanked me, or they, I should say they... They hinted around that they wanted knitting lessons, and, you know, I just don't feel I'm up to that. And I'm not going to go to your house and give you knitting lessons. Okay, I'm sorry. You, you could go on YouTube and learn how to knit. You don't need me. That's how I learned. So that's what I wanted to share. I'm on my fourth pair of socks, and I'm on a sock knitting frenzy. So hopefully I don't run out of yarn by the end of Snowstorm Jonah. I guess that's what they're calling it. Although everybody at the National Weather Service is very offended by this. But, you know, hey, you know, if the Weather Channel wants to name the storm, let it go. Let it go. It all has to start somewhere. Anyway, this is KC3CIF signing out. 73.